Today we would like to give you an overview of Northern Gulf's Biodiversity Project, which was funded through the Federal Government's Biodiversity Program from 2012 to 2017. Additionally, we will present some of our own research and consultancy work obtained during our time on the project. The program focused on nature refuges. 44 were gazetted at the commencement of the project. A nature refuge can be established on part or all of a landholder's property which identifies as having significant conservation value. Landholders enter an agreement with the government on its management and preservation. However, it is still able to be used for ongoing sustainable use such as grazing. The benefit to the landholder is they are able to apply for funding, which can be used to improve both the property values and biodiversity values, for example, stock exclusion fencing or alternative watering points. The aim of the project was to enhance and or maintain biodiversity values of nature refuges in both Cape York and Northern Gulf regions. This was through delivering on-ground threat abatement actions at prioritised sites. These focused on pest animal and plants, improved fire management, overgrazing in key sites and reducing unauthorised access. This was carried out through a peer-reviewed devolved grant program. Increasing our understanding of biodiversity on nature refuges and establishing biodiversity monitoring sites and knowledge and capacity building with landholders. I will now provide an overview of the on-ground projects in the following slides. Devolved grant projects occurred across 21 nature refuges. Total operating of projects is almost $1.5 million. Some of the highlights are as follows. Inappropriate fire regimes are extremely damaging to Australian flora and fauna, particularly high intensity expansive wildfire. Our program carried out fire management projects across 11 nature refuges. Fire management activities aim to protect 877,755 hectares of nature refuge. One example of a successful project is our work with the Balnagarawara Rangers, who won the 2016 Landcare Partnership Award for our project with them on improved fire management on Melsonby Nature Refuge. Signage was established across 12 locations on Rindapa Nature Refuge. The site is currently threatened by trespassers who collect orchids, spread weeds, light fires and dump rubbish. Signage acts as a deterrent to unauthorised access and complements current range of programs. One property implemented pig control with 250 pigs killed at high conservation sites on the nature refuge during the project. Weeds are a significant threat to the landscape. They compete with native vegetation, modify habitat for fauna, increase fire intensity and damage riparian zones. Weed control activities occurred across seven priority nature refuges and primarily targeted rubber vine and lantana. One example is Lava Hill. The nature refuge is situated southeast of Cohen on the east coast of Cape York. The hill is an ancient volcanic basalt plug which now supports an isolated vine thicket ecosystem. This ecosystem is important because it is an isolated example of this habitat in open savanna woodland. The basalt plug is also an ideal habitat for lantana and there is serious risk of the entire refuge becoming infested. The Ayapathu rangers spent considerable time hand pulling lantana before the commencement of the project. We funded training in using splatter guns to apply herbicide and the rangers have removed lantana from the majority of the nature refuge from 2015 to 2016. Cattle exclusion fencing for the project focused on sensitive spring complexes, riparian areas and open savanna woodland of high conservation value. Additionally, one property replaced the top wire of fences to a plain wire to protect a population of greater gliders who regularly became entangled on fence lines in the Ainsley Uplands bioregion. I will now address how the project contributed to increasing our understanding of biodiversity on nature refuges in Cape York and Northern Gulf. During the life of the project, we have undertaken numerous fauna surveys. We covered areas from near the top of Cape York all the way down to the bottom of the Ironsley Uplands bioregion, and these involved intensive sampling of mammals, reptiles, amphibians and birds which occur in the region. This slide demonstrates the survey effort during the project's life, which equates to thousands of hours in the field. The work has greatly increased the WildNet database records for North Queensland, which is used to inform federal and state government programs and decision making. 
This slide shows the total number of records collected of mammals, reptiles, birds and amphibians in the region. This gives you an idea of how large a contribution the data provides, where only a handful of records previously occurred for many species. For example, approximately 40 records for the northern quoll, a federally listed species, existed in the government database before our project. In one survey alone, we captured 86 records of this species in Cape York. June and November 2013, we surveyed Warrington Station, a cattle property in the Ainsley Uplands. During the surveys, there was abundant populations of greater gliders, brush tail possums, sugar gliders and the rufous batong. We also found spectacle hair wallabies, which are listed as vulnerable under the EPBC. In 2015 and 2016, we conducted various surveys on the South Endeavour Trust properties, South Endeavour, Kings Plains, Alcumi and Kalula. We detected high numbers of northern quolls using camera trapping. The species is endangered under the EPBC. The introduction of cane toads to Australia has resulted in local extinctions and massive declines of quolls across most of northeastern Australia. We provide evidence here of toads and quolls coexisting with cane toads. This finding suggests that quolls in North Queensland are starting to adjust to the presence of cane toads, avoiding them as a prey item. We conducted a survey at Talaroo Nature Refuge in April 2016. Of particular importance during this survey was the capture of an unbanded shovel's nose snake. The capture extends the distribution of the species 427 kilometres to the northeast of the nearest observational records. This capture is the first known record of this species in the Ainsley Uplands bioregion, an area which is also known to support ecologically similar species. The specimen was lodged with the Queensland Museum as it is suspected it may be a new species. Throughout the project, several species from a number of properties have been lodged with the Queensland Museum for further taxonomic investigation due to the uncertainty in their in in identification. In early 2016, we did a camera survey at the Mariba wetlands. We found high abundance of common brush tail possums, rufous batongs and northern brown bandicoots. We also detected low abundance of the federally listed northern quoll. The common brush tail possum, northern brown bandicoot and northern quoll have undergone recent significant declines across other parts of northern Australia. The healthy populations of these species may indicate that threats elsewhere may not be impacting these species on the reserve. One of the biggest conservation concerns at the moment across the top end of Australia is the demise of many of our mammal species. These mammals typically weigh under 5 kilograms. The exact cause is not completely understood. However, approximately 56 species are currently facing extinction. The reason for declines are poorly understood in North Queensland. Due to the lack of information on where mammals are present in North Queensland, we endeavoured to try to improve our survey methods. Without improved survey data, efforts to understand threats and conserve these species may be misguided. This is a standard plot design used when undertaking fauna surveys. It covers one hectare and a variety of traps are laid out in the area as shown on this slide. During the pro project, while undertaking regular fauna survey work, we have started integrating camera traps into the one hectare plot design in the hopes to improve detection of mammals. We have previously combined data sets from across Northern Gulf and found very low abundance of mammals across the region. We placed two camera traps along the centre line, baited with peanut butter bait and left them in the field between 30 and 40 days. Camera traps were integrated into 63 one hectare sample sites, surveyed during 2015 and 2016. Of these sites, 52 were located in Cape York and 11 in the Ainsley Uplands. 25 species of small to medium sized mammal were detected, including the feral cat, pig and dingo. Camera traps are found to significantly improve the detection of the dingo, pig, northern quoll, northern brown bandicoot and short beaked echidna. The grassland malamese was detected significantly more using traditional survey techniques. Further, there were a number of species that were only detected using camera traps, but unfortunately these captures did not provide a decent sample size for analysis due to the low detection rate. We are currently preparing this work to be published and hope findings will be used to further develop improved survey methods for our region. Now I'll give you an overview of some of the work we did to build 
capacity with landholders. One challenge land managers often face is the difficulty in identifying wildlife observed on individual properties. Field guides are often very comprehensive and not user friendly to the untrained eye. As part of delivering improved capacity as part of the program, we develop fauna field guides. This involved the development of fact sheets for 49 amphibians, 144 reptiles, 91 mammals and 343 birds across northern Queensland. From this main book, we are able to pull out customised property field guides for each nature refuge, like this example from Melzenby. We develop customised field guides from 31 nature refuge landholders, encompassing information for the wildlife which occurs across 1.2 million hectares. These contain information on threats and ways landholders can mitigate these impacts on local wildlife. These have been extremely successful with landholders. Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service have recently printed copies for their national parks and the Cape York Tenure Resolution Office have printed copies for traditional owner groups in Cape York. We hope the outcomes of this program contribute to conserving the wildlife and landscapes of North Queensland.